the Holy Spirit a question to me. And he said, first of all, do you really believe that I'm able to do everything that I promised you to do? Am I able to do it? And then, do you believe that as God, I am faithful to do what I promised you to do? And finally, if you believe that I'm able and that I'm faithful to keep my word, do you believe that I'm willing to do what I am able and faithful to do? And of course, we say, yes, yes, yes. We believe all of that. But the question was put to me by the Holy Spirit. If you really trust me, David, if you really believe that I'm God with all the ability and faithfulness and willingness, why sometimes you go around so cast down? Why do you look like your God is dead? Do you go on the job and you say, I know I trust God, but what about the way you walk around your family? Because you see, if you really had trust in God, you would believe that there's no problem in your life that he can't work out. That no matter what the weight is on you, no matter what your family problem is, before you went to bed, you committed it to the Lord. When you got up in the morning, you didn't pick it up because he said you're to cast all your care upon him and leave it there. He said, thy billows and thy waves you've allowed to come over me. And now the waves are hitting him of trouble and discouragement. And, and in the process, deep is calling to deep. God is reaching down into the innermost saying, you have not yet learned to trust me. You said you did, you thought you did, but you've not yet learned that in all things. And he said, I'm going to let waves come. These waves won't sink you. These waves won't drown you. You're not going to get hurt by this fire. But you're going to learn in this to trust me with everything in you. You're going to come to a place where you give up totally trying to figure things out. You give up totally trying to understand in the flesh how to overcome. You're going to lean on me. You're going to just surrender to my will. Hallelujah. See, God's not interested in you just getting your next victory. He's interested in you becoming surrendered to his will, period. He wants us surrendered. He'll just keep them coming till we reach surrender. Once you surrender and resign to his perfect will, that's when the calm begins. That's when the waters are stilled by his voice. To say to his heart, now settle down, soul. You're impatient, you're upset, you're fretting, you're angry, you're accusing the Lord of not being concerned because you have impatience in you. Things have not turned out the way you prayed and it got to you. And folks, sometimes it gets to you. That's where some of you are right now. But so you're going to hope in God. You're going to remember all of God's faithfulness in your past. You remember that God has always brought you through every trouble and every trial. He that delivered you in the past will deliver you now. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'll go with you to the end. I'll go with you to the end. So no matter what we go through, he said, I'm with you. And as long as he's with us, that should bring us the confidence that we need. Trusting in God is not an option. I used to think, well, if I don't trust God, I'm the only one that suffers. I may lose the blessing, but that's not so. The Bible says it's a curse. And it deeply offends God. It offends the Lord. We think that drugs and alcohol and homosexuality and all these things offend the Lord. I'm telling you, those were not the things that kept Israel out of the promised land. It was unbelief. This is the sin that grieves God more than any other sin. Of course, all these other sins are a result of unbelief. They stem from unbelief that causes pride in flesh. You have need of patience after you've done the will of the Father that you might receive the promise. You have need of patience. If you've got an impatient spirit, take it to the Lord and ask Him to forgive you. To give you a waiting heart on Him. All right, I want you to go to Jeremiah 17. Let's start verse 5. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. This is the curse of all who will not trust fully in God and lean on the arm of flesh. That means your own flesh or the flesh of somebody else. Rather than taking it to God and resigning to his perfect will and believing that he's going to answer your prayer, it's running off trying to make it work, trying to manipulate, make telephone calls. I mean, just go at it trying to make it work. 
You know what that curse is? A perpetual dryness. You're like a heath in the desert. That's just a sprig that's got thorns on it. There's no leaves, there's no fruit. There's nothing of beauty. It's just there in a dry wilderness. It's a dryness. It's an emptiness. I don't want to live my Christian life dry and empty without fruit. But that's what unbelief brings. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth out her roots. The Lord said, I'm going to plant you. You're not even going to depend on the rain. You're going to have living water. You're going to go down deep where the water is always dead. Those that are planted by the Holy Ghost, those who believe God explicitly, are taking root down into the eternal river of the Holy Spirit's life and power and rivers. He said, you will always be green. You always be fruitful, that spreadeth out her roots by the river, shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Folks, I want to bear fruit to the day I die. I want to be a green tree with life. 